at Lockhart in the Riverina, about 40 miles from Wagga, when I was a kid. And a little unusual, I played rugby league the first two or three years because there was no Aussie rules. The rugby league died out and the Aussie rules started up an under 13, under 16 comp, which I played in. We won premierships in both levels. And then after the 16, uh, under 16's grand final, I decided that uh, I, wasn't, I wouldn't be good enough to play in the seniors at Lockhart, so I didn't play. And I think um, mum and dad must have got sick of me hanging around the house because the old man kicked me out and told me to go to training. And, and lucky he did because uh, I played in the uh, uh, premiership side for Lockhart that year against Wagga. And we were a town of a thousand people and Wagga was 30,000 people. So that was a pretty good victory for us. Um, interesting, from that side, uh, four boys went on to play AFL football. Uh, the most notable was Reggie Gleeson, who played on halfback flank for South Melbourne. He played over 150 games. Uh, from, uh, at that time, I joined the bank and got transferred to Finlay, uh, famous for the Hawkins uh, father and son. Played in the grand final that year, got beaten by Berrigan. The following year, I got transferred in the bank to Geraldry, which was uh, Billy Brownless country. Uh, we had a cracker side that year, played in the grand final, but unfortunately the heavens opened up and we had to play in about three or four inches of water. So uh, we just got pipped at the post there. But um, my first year at Finlay was the first year of the zoning, uh, and Geelong was allocated the Murray League, which uh, I was in and um, got invited down that first year at Finlay, but Dad thought I was a bit too young, so he said no. And the second year, at the grand final, John were there again and invited me down, and, uh, and Dad said, okay, go. So uh, I arrived at Geelong, did the pre-season, and uh, a little bit, uh, not dissimilar to Joe Radojevic, I. I looked on the board to see if my name was on either of the senior list or the supplementary list. It was on neither. But unlike Joe, uh, my departure was a little bit more organised. Uh, the East Geelong boys waiting in the car park for me and, and I went out there and uh, played the first four or five games in their premiership year. And that was in uh, uh, 1969. And uh, only lasted four or five games. I had, uh, I went okay. And um, Johnny O'Neill said, "Come on over. You're, you're back on the supplementary list." So that year, I finished off playing the whole, all the rest of the season in the seconds. The following year, I made the senior list. I remember my first game. It was against South Melbourne at the uh, Lake Oval, and uh, there was five of us played our first game that day. Rodney Stokes, Warwick Gates, myself, and two other ordinary players uh, by the names of David Clark and Mickey Wilno. So we all played our first games. And uh, while I was there, I had four, uh, four, three coaches. I had Peter Piano, Johnny O'Neill, Bill McMaster, and finished up with Polly Farmer. Uh, from there, I, um, I came over here. I played two seasons here under Billy. Then I, um, I was in talks for quite some time with uh, the Port Adelaide Football Club in Adelaide. And uh, I decided to go over there. At the time, the bank had a policy that uh, if you played the best of any sport, they would transfer you and make a position available at their cost. So, my dream was to go and play in Adelaide, Western Australia, go up the top, come back to Brisbane, Sydney, and back home. But uh, sadly, three knee operations uh, didn't allow that to happen. And uh, when I played four years for Port Adelaide, I um, transferred back to the Riverina and went coaching there. Um, coaching, I, I coached at Coolabin. Uh, played in a prem uh, not a premiership, we got beaten in the final. Uh, two years there, then went over and captain coach Val Reynolds, way out west. And I guess my claim to fame there was they'd never, in 50 years, they'd never played a final. 
but we happened to play two finals that first year. Uh, got beat. And then I got transferred to Albury, and I always promised my uncle, who was the president of the Lockhart Football Club, that I'd try and give him a year. So I gave him my last year, I was 35, and, uh, and that was basically my career. The Geelong West. It was an easy decision for me to come to Geelong West because at the time my coach was Polly, who I admired greatly, wanted me to leave my bank job and he would get me a job at the timber mill so that I'd get to training at three o'clock. And I told Billy, uh, beg, beg pardon, I told Polly that that, that wasn't going to happen and uh, he said, well, Ockie, you're no good to me and turned away. And that was in 73. We were a bit lucky that year. I, um, we played in the grand final, reserve grade grand final in, in front of a hundred odd thousand people, which was special. Uh, ten other boys from Geelong, we all came over here to Billy, play under Billy. And it wasn't hard because we'd all played together for quite a number of years. We all knew each other, we knew each other's games, and it was an easy transition. We were, we were well led by Billy and, and his committee. Uh, we had a wonderful medical crew and, and the ladies were fantastic. The ladies committee looked after us like silkworms. But when I came over here, I, I was taken aback by some of the nicknames. We had, a, we had a Frosty, a Shifty, a Donkey, a Dizzy. The one in particular struck my fancy, his name was Snake. And uh, the curiosity got the better of me one, one night in the showers and I, I took a peek. And if ever there was a mismatch for a nickname, it was this one. But we played our first practice game and, and this fellow was in and out under the packs like you wouldn't believe. And he'd always come out with the ball. He had the great setup of balance. You couldn't knock him over. Rarely was he ever knocked over. And that's where he got his nickname from. And he ended up being a wonderful vice captain here for me and Billy. We had some real characters here at the club. One was Dizzy Lynch, who was a great runner. I remember Billy took us on a, uh, a road run from Belmont to Torquay, and we all took off. Dizzy was there and he wore thongs. And he let us all go, and we all bunched up in different groups down the road. And Dizzy gave us about a half hour start. And away he went, and he, he ran in his thongs. And he was such a, he was so good that he ran, at some stages he ran backwards in his thongs, and he was running faster than us. So it was good to see that he did well with his running. We all, we all knew that uh, <clears throat> Billy had a special affiliation with Tony Gilmore, and it stemmed back from when they played together. Uh, they had an admiration for each other. We all knew that Tony was Billy's pet. And one day Billy came up to me, we were getting beaten at half time, and he said, Ocker, what, what's happening? What's going on out there? And I said, Jesus, Billy, could you tell Tony to take a little bit longer and deliver the ball a little bit better? Well, Billy wasn't having any of that. He just turned on his heel and walked away, and he never asked my opinion again. <laughs> I was only here for two years, 74 and 75, but, and not, not a lot's been spoken about 74. But we had a pretty fair year in 74, and with an ounce of luck we could have played in, in that grand final. Um, uh, I stand to be corrected, but I think we only lost five games, and two of those were in the finals. On a personal level, I had a, a fairly good year. I ran second to Darkie Harris in the best and fairest by a vote, and um, I kicked over 40 goals from centre forward. So it was fairly successful from that point of view. The following year uh, was bittersweet for me. Um, I got hurt and I had to have an operation early. 
and uh, I didn't play till uh, till midway through the year. Uh, and I was very lucky to be appointed captain of that side uh, because with, with the uh, departure of Darkie Harris, who went off coaching, uh, we recruited Tony Gilmore. And with the elevation of Terry Bright and young Woofy, um, it seemed to me the, the golfing stars were all aligned and, and we had such confidence in, the, in, in each other and in Billy's game plan, and in Billy, that, that our expectation was that we would win every game. And uh, pretty much that happened. Uh, of course, it's history. We went on and won the Premiership, and, uh, and it was a wonderful period for the club we had. It was just harmonious, happy, and, you know, it was just a good time to be here. And it's so sad to see that, you know, we no longer exist after such, you know, a strong showing. Uh, my, my position was uh, pretty much centre forward. I played centre forward uh, uh, almost everywhere that I went. Uh, my first game uh, with Fort Geelong was I was changing Ruck Rover with uh, Ken Newlands. Uh, translated, that meant I was a permanent forward pocket because it was pretty hard to get Kenny off the ball. But, but for the most part, uh, apart from little stints in the ruck, I played centre half forward and uh, I had the great fortune of uh, representing Safa over in uh, South Australia at centre half forward. Uh, I played for the Geelong Seconds at centre half forward uh, against uh, New South Wales side. And uh, I actually played for New South Wales at St. R. Ford uh, in a rep game. So pretty much that, that was my position. I, in 74, I met and married my wife, Margaret. And in 75, I had my first four sons here. Uh, so it's very difficult to get away from 74, 75. But it was just the camaraderie here, the, the bus trips. Uh, I remember the bus trips were a real novelty when I first came here because everybody had to sing a song. And after five or six trips, I went to Billy and, and I asked, could I drive my car up? And he said, why? Okay. And I said, well, if Warwick Yates sings Big John and Joe Radojevic sings the national anthem one more time, I'm going to jump out the window. And uh, Billy said, uh, no, Oka, you'll be coming on the bus and suffering with the rest of us. I guess when I first came over to Geelong West, I, I didn't, I never really understood the VFA, but it didn't take long. It was easy to see their point of difference was not only that they didn't have wings, but the brutality of their game. And, and it was their point of difference, and I think they promoted it every opportunity. I saw more buddy thuggery on a VFA field than I've seen in all the rest of my life. And the umpires just seemed to turn away from it and, and allow it to happen. And I'm sure that direction came from the VFA itself because, you know, TV rights and whatever. Forty years on from that final, it would have been, it would have been interesting, and I've often thought about it, if we'd all stayed together, we all seemed to, some stayed, uh, but I left, and I just always wondered if Billy had stayed here, and, and all the players had stuck together, because we were all so young, that, uh, you know, perhaps we could have achieved more. Uh, as far as uh, myself, um, three knee operations, made it difficult. I played till I was 35, but I was never, ever the same. I didn't, I never played with the freedom that I did uh, prior to hurting my knee the first time. And, um, uh, you know, but I, I think I got the most out of my career as, as good as, you know, as good as I could have done. You've given your heart to get here and to see
soul to get it right. You can take them boots and all, but it's sure gonna take a fight. When you spend all week getting to your peak, you're gonna have your say. You bet. On Sunday, it's the BFA. It's Sunday, you're gonna make your play for the BFA. Today, you're gonna fly. It's Sunday for the BFA. It's Sunday.